Pop the champagne. Toast. Get ready. Confetti can be falling in Lubbock. Tonight, Texas Tech has gotten a big 12 win. I hope they stormed the court, but I think there was only about 25 people in that gym from what I saw. The roads were icy, okay? Look, jokes aside, Texas Tech shocks the world in the way they did this tonight. Down 20 in the second half to a very tough Iowa State team. Caleb Grill had seven threes when they were up 20 last I checked. And next thing you know, the Red Raiders are tied with 30 seconds left to play. Ultimately, Mark Adams' team prevails in overtime. This is the Field of 68 After Dark. I'm Greg Waddell. We got Matt McCall. We got Patrick Young. Uh, and this is a stunning result, gentlemen. Pat, let's go to you first here. You were reacting live just a few minutes ago. Like, I can't believe Texas Tech is even in this right now. What happened, Pat? What are we doing right now? Uh, the second half is what happened. And clearly, uh, Iowa State forgot how to take care of the basketball. 13 turnovers, 19 uh, points off of turnovers for Texas Tech after Iowa State only had four turnovers in the first half. It was the defense of Texas Tech, that defense that we thought was going to be elite. I think everyone kind of thought was going to be elite from the beginning of the season. And, it, yeah, it's just so surprising that Iowa State couldn't figure out a way to take care of the ball. Uh, and, gosh, the, the, our, our friends over at Bet Rivers, hats off. Hats off <laughs> to uh, projecting, predicting the spread uh, exactly where it needed to be. I don't know how you do this. Uh, it's unbelievable. It is. I was like, man, I should have, I should have went hard on Ohio, Iowa State. And needless to say, Texas State came back and got this done in overtime. That's a great win for them when they've been reeling this season. And Iowa State coming off that loss against Missouri. Uh, after being – when I saw Iowa State against Kansas State earlier, I was like, man, uh, everyone looks good at home. Everyone does. Everyone looks um, amazing at home. But that the, the real test is on the road, and uh, especially when uh, all these neutral side games are coming up. You never know who's – majority of the fans are going to be at a at location that you, you match up with in, in the tournament. Um, but a lot of work still to be done for this Iowa State team that I still have them as a, as a dark horse – to be a final four team. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like watching the second half, Iowa state, it was almost like that game before Christmas, right? Pat, like you get this big lead and now all of a sudden we're going to relax. We're going on Christmas break. The game's over. We get to go home. Don't worry about it. And it's like, Hey, no, man, you got to show up and play the second half. Like, mm -hmm. like, where's the effort? Where's the defense? Where's everything? Not to mention, how about this? Iowa State goes 12 for 21 from the foul line and shoot 57%. Okay? Texas Tech shoots 16 more free throws than Iowa State. That, that That's that's a recipe Wait. for disaster. But wow. if Iowa State just makes – Two more foul shots in the second half, the game's over. The game's over. They win the game, and then they get on the plane, they go home, and everything's good. I, I just – they just took a breath. They thought the game was over. They relaxed, and Texas Tech cap capitalized it. I, I felt like it was that – because I've been a part of those where you have a big lead at the half, that game before Christmas, you have a really big lead, and everyone goes on Christmas break because they think the game's over. And, man – Texas Tech came storm back, and all of a sudden, oh, man, now, now it's a one-possession game. Holy cow, I got to go to the foul line and make this free throw in order for us to win. Oh, like, it's a different game. Yeah, so 18, 18 fouls in the second half for Iowa State alone. Yeah, I mean, that's and that's how you get back into a game, right? If you're a team that has is down huge, it's let's get to the foul line. Because we get to the foul line, it stops the clock. That's the biggest thing. We get to the foul line, it stops the clock, puts the other team in foul trouble. So – Man, I, I was just – they just stopped playing. They they stopped playing, and that's the bottom line. McCall, what's more surprising to you? Because when we talk stop playing, took the foot off the gas, the Christmas mentality, whatever you want to call it, that's not something I would ever associate with a TJ Otzelberger team through what I've seen from his teams, right? Like, he's just – he's not 
a coach with the way they play and the that toughness defensively, that's not something I would ever expect to see for a half. So clearly you can bite anybody. But is that more surprising from their end? Or is it more surprising to you that a Texas Tech team that was winless in this conference lost to this team by 30 just a couple weeks ago and is down, I think, 17 points at halftime, is able to continue to play hard and scratch and claw and come back from that deficit. Coach Donovan used to always say this, who's the more desperate team? Who's the more desperate team? The more desperate team out here. Who wants the game more? Who's the more desperate team? The more desperate team is going to win this game. And Iowa State, especially in that second half, didn't play like the more desperate team. They didn't. That second half, you know, I I made the Christmas reference. You could also say, still a little hungover for what happened against Missouri, whatever it may be, but they, they they were not the more desperate team, and Texas Tech was. I think it's – am I surprised that Texas Tech was the more desperate team in the second half of that game? No, because of where they were, and they just – they weren't just going to lay down. They came out fighting and played with more effort, and ultimately that's why they were they able to win the game. Pat, from a Big 12 perspective, because this Iowa State team – uh, you know, last year was the surprise to me. It's his first year there off a, a season with so many losses the year before to make that team competitive last season was wildly impressive this year. Still to me, a team you'd put on a list of quote unquote overachievers, maybe through this point in the season where you're surprised how damn good their record is. You're surprised that they're in the big 12 race with teams like Kansas Baylor even Kansas State, with the way Noel and Johnson have been playing, I think it's hard to to look at that team and then look at Iowa State's group of guys and say, like, there's the talent here that they could win the Big 12. And up until today, they really held up like they were a contender. Does a result like tonight sort of, like, is that is that maybe why people could have doubted this team? Like, uh, it's not that big of a surprise that it has happened to a team because they actually are a step behind in terms of talent from that top tier in this conference. Yeah, uh, you know, at, at this point in the season, when you're striving to compete for a championship, I everyone's justified to have their question marks because Iowa State was well in control of this game early on. And not having the ability to have the mindset, because uh, that's that's usually the biggest thing that coaches struggle with. Up in that up in the first half, we got the second half coming. Um, we need to be more desperate. Doesn't matter that we're already up. We need to we need to bring more tenacity, more fight than we just had, regardless of the outcome, because it's a forty minute game. And being at this point in the season, it I can see where the question marks can come from, not being able to flip the script coming out with a because like Texas Tech, they're going to fight. What do they have to lose? You you, you got to understand like as a team that is projected to be where they are and, and knowing who you are as a, as a team. There's always going to be a target on your back, um, and and teams are going to respond. Human and we are we already know you got to withstand that first punch from a team coming out in the second half. If you can kind of withstand that, because you know it's going to be. If you can't, that's what opens the door, and then you start getting shaky and whatnot, and the fans start getting into the games, and then all kinds of crazy shots, and the referees are calling fouls, and uh, you know it's, it's just I didn't know realize that Iowa State would struggle so much with playing defense without fouling. Um, that's really what shot them in the foot the the most getting to the allowing tech to get to the free throw line so much but yeah I don't I don't know it's it's not too too late in the sense of thinking about the the, the tournament but the big 12 race this 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 is going to be one that bites them in the butt for sure so our own Jeff Goodman again has been uh, a little vocally critical, I would say, of Texas Tech, specifically tonight. If you follow our Field of 68 account, a certain picture was put out there this afternoon of, uh, or well, this early evening of how empty the crowd was before this game. Uh, And to read a little quote from Jeff's own Twitter account tonight, Texas Tech has no pop tonight. Red Raiders with just 22 points at the break. Iowa State leads 39 to 22 at halftime in Chile, Lubbock. Made sure to know that, uh, you know, those fans did inform him that it was a little cold tonight. That's why there may not have been so many people there. So we may have to just do a little segment called Jeff Goodman's Mentions on the afters tonight on the Field of 68. How Jeff Goodman eats his corn. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, that'll be a fun one. Stay tuned. We'll do that uh, at the end of the show.